China is undertaking the construction of the world's largest network of artificial rivers in a bold attempt to essentially defy nature. Spanning thousands of miles with a network of man-made canals, aqueducts, and tunnels that traverse actual mountains, China seeks to transport freshwater from the south to its arid industrial regions in the north. In this video, we will delve into the contentious south-to-north water diversion project, its financial implications, the reasons behind it, its environmental impact, and how it might benefit or fail to benefit the Chinese population. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Since ancient times, China has been both blessed and challenged by its geography. The Yangtze and Yellow River systems, which flow from west to east, have enabled much of eastern China to support human civilizations for thousands of years. These regions have benefited from fertile floodplains that sustain a continuously growing population. The Yellow River Valley in particular is one of the most extensive and consistently cultivated areas of arable land in the world. In contrast, the northern and far western parts of China are characterized by dry or mountainous terrain. Much of the northwest is sparsely populated and unsuitable for agriculture. This stark geographic divide is underscored by the fact that 94% of China's population resides east of an imaginary line that splits the country into two contrasting regions. Historically, China's capital Beijing and its surrounding northern cities have been central hubs of population, agriculture, and trade. However, as China's population and economic wealth surged dramatically in the mid-20th century, essential resources like water became increasingly scarce in the region. Northern cities have long depended on groundwater to support their populations. Yet, the rising urban and industrial demand soon led to the overexploitation of this limited freshwater source. Additionally, the nearby Gobi Desert in China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region has been steadily expanding, causing more frequent dust and sand storms, which exacerbates the region's water scarcity issues. By the early 1950s, it became increasingly clear that northern China would soon be unable to provide sufficient water for its population, and China needed to find a way to support hundreds of millions of people. To address the looming water shortage, Mao Zedong, the founder of the People's Republic of China, proposed in 1952 the idea of transferring water from the south to the arid northern regions. Fifty years later, in 2002, Mao's vision was finally approved by the country's state council after extensive planning and research. The mega-project, officially named the South to North Water Transfer Project, aimed to create a vast network of connected aqueducts, tunnels, reservoirs, and dams to transport fresh water from the water-rich south to the water-scarce north. The project was designed to include three major canal systems, known as the Eastern, Central, and Western routes. The Eastern route starts near the city of Yangzhou, utilizing a major branch of the Yangtze River. An enormous pumping station is tasked with pumping water from the Yangtze onto the Jinghang Grand Canal, the world's longest fully constructed artificial waterway. From there, the water flows through an underground tunnel that crosses the Yellow River. Finally, a series of aqueducts transports the water towards the coastal city of Tianjin, which lies northwest of the capital Beijing. In total, the eastern route spans over 683 miles. Construction on this route began in 2002, with the aim of delivering fresh water by 2013. However, Due to multiple construction delays, the completion date was pushed back by over four years. By 2017, fresh water finally reached Tianjin, delivering an estimated 1 billion cubic meters of water per year, directly benefiting up to 10 million residents. Unlike the Eastern Route, the Central Route lacked pre-existing infrastructure to channel the water. Consequently, constructing this route posed greater challenges. The central route begins at the Danjianka Reservoir. To facilitate the downstream flow of water to the north, the Danjianka Dam had to be raised by 15 meters. This elevation increase allowed the reservoir's water level to rise sufficiently, 
enabling the water to travel through the canals and aqueducts without the need for pumping stations. However, this modification required the relocation of over 300,000 people from Hubei and Hunan provinces to accommodate the expanded reservoir and new canals. The remainder of the central route consists of man-made canals and aqueducts, creating a network of elevated and underground waterways spanning the Chinese Central Plain. Completed in 2014, the central route stretches over 745 miles. Upon its completion, approximately one-third of the water from the Han River was diverted, causing significant issues for the millions of people who depended on the Han for their freshwater supply. In July 2022, the Chinese government announced plans for a massive underground tunnel to address water supply needs. This tunnel, situated half a mile below the surface, would link the Three Gorges Dam to the Han River, ultimately connecting to the central route extending to Beijing. Upon completion, it would stand as the longest and deepest artificial waterway ever constructed. By 2030, the central route is projected to transfer up to 12 cubic kilometers of water annually, equivalent to approximately a third of the entire capacity of the Three Gorges Reservoir. Unlike the eastern and central routes, the western route of China's south to north water transfer project remains in the planning stage. It poses the greatest construction challenges of the three routes. The proposed plan for the western route involves creating a network of waterways and tunnels connecting the Yangtze River to the Yellow River through the Qinghai-Tibet Plateau, situated approximately 2 to 3 miles above sea level. The region's rugged topography and harsh climate present formidable obstacles for this undertaking. Moreover, the western route's trajectory necessitates engineers to carve through mountains, further complicating the project's execution. The completion of the western route is projected for the year 2050, with estimates suggesting it could deliver up to 17 cubic kilometers of fresh water annually to northern Chinese provinces. Once operational, this route could serve a combined population of nearly 100 million people along its path. While there have been unofficial discussions in the past regarding the possibility of the western route diverting water from transboundary rivers originating in China, such as the Brahmaputra and Mekong rivers that flow through India and Southeast Asia respectively, this has never been an official part of the project. However, India has expressed concern over China's potential manipulation of the Brahmaputra's flow, viewing it as a potential threat. For the Chinese government, the South to North Water Transfer Project, despite being incomplete, is already demonstrating significant success. According to Chinese state media, the South to North Water Transfer Project provides benefits to as many as 140 million Chinese citizens residing in water-scarce regions. However, opinions on the project vary among local and provincial Chinese governments. Southern upstream provinces like Sichuan and Hubei oppose the redirection of the Yangtze's flow northward, citing concerns over water security and the impact on the hydropower sector. Conversely, western provinces such as Gansu and Qinghai view the construction of the western route as a means to bring much-needed socio-economic and agricultural stability to their regions. Despite proving beneficial to some northern Chinese cities, the project has sparked considerable concern among both local and international environmentalists. The South to North Water Transfer Project consists entirely of artificial waterways that disrupt the natural west-to-east flow of China's rivers. As a result, the construction of these canals has interrupted hundreds of natural rivers, causing some to completely dry up as their flow is redirected artificially. In fact, due to the immense size and volume of water transported by the project, approximately 600 rivers have vanished during its construction. Moreover, industrial waste and sewage have inadvertently contaminated these artificial waterways. Due to the extensive network of artificial rivers passing through numerous cities and villages, many individuals, businesses, and industries dispose of their waste directly into these man-made waterways. Compounding the issue is the glaring absence of water treatment facilities along the entire path of the project. During the initial stages of the central route's operation, 
when the natural flow of the Yangtze River was reduced by up to 36 percent. Experts expressed concerns about the potential backflow of seawater from the Yellow Sea into the local water supplies of coastal Chinese cities like Shanghai and Nantong. If the diversion of water into artificial rivers continued to diminish the Yangtze's flow, saltwater intrusion from the Yellow Sea could extend into the man-made canals themselves. Such an occurrence could precipitate a nationwide water crisis. One of the primary reasons why the Western Route has remained stalled in the planning stage for an extended period is environmental concerns. The proposed plan for this route entails the construction of tunnels through a highly mountainous area of China. This construction could potentially trigger landslides and cause significant environmental damage to the local flora and fauna. Furthermore, the area where the route is intended to pass through is known for its seismic activity. Building a critical megaproject like the South to North Water Transfer Project in this seismically active region could potentially result in billions of dollars in damages to the Chinese government in the event of a major earthquake. As of today, the South to North Water Transfer Project has successfully completed two of its three planned routes. However, the construction of this project has incurred significant financial, environmental, social, and economic costs for both the Chinese government and its people. The total cost of the entire project is estimated to be around $62 billion, not including the substantial funds required for the maintenance of 2,000 miles of canals, aqueducts, dams, tunnels, and reservoirs. Despite this considerable financial investment, the project has yet to fully achieve its original goal of providing clean water to China's northern regions. What are your thoughts about the South to North Water Transfer Project? Do you think the benefits of the project outweigh its environmental costs? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.